Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another edition of the Mickey Bot Podcast. I am your host, Jared, alongside Alyssa Antonelli. Once again, my trusty co-host for quite a while. We are back with another magical episode here on the Mickey Bot Podcast. We cover all things Disney, from the parks to the cruise line to the streaming service to Star Wars. Not as much living with the land, but that's okay. Uh, if you're a fan, you can still hang around. I just won't talk about it as much as others. The point is, we talk about all things Disney here, and in this episode, we're very excited because we do have a special guest, and that special guest, believe it or not, has some Disney ties. So we're excited to talk to our special guest today. Before I introduce her and get into all that, I want to ask Alyssa, how are you doing? Good. Just always excited about another uh, another episode, and so excited to have Tanya here. Um, obviously, a great partner of Mickey Travels, and uh, it's going to be a fun day. Uh, it's been a little bit since we've had a, a guest on, so it's always fun when somebody's in the middle of the two of us, Jared, right? Usually just the two of us I know. answering back and forth. I know. it. It This is kind of good because the listeners, every once in a while, are probably like, I'm really tired of listening to Jared and Alyssa just ramble and ramble. Oh, it's not, nice to yes. have a different voice. Yes, you know, absolutely. I, not you, but me. The point is, uh, we're super excited to have Tanya on. So let me introduce her uh, because I am just really excited to get into the interview slash discussion we're going to be having today. Today's topic is all about what it is like to be a Disney um, content creator, um, live streamer, things of that nature. Uh, and we're going to talk to someone who does it, you know. Uh, a lot. So let's jump right in. We are so happy to have Tanya Blakey on the show today. You may know Tanya within the Disney community as that crazy Disney lady. That is the name of her YouTube channel and social media platforms as well, where she has gained tens of thousands of followers throughout the years. Her YouTube channel has gained over 6 million views, and she is known to bring you with her on live streams throughout the parks. She's also a proud partner of Mickey Travels. So we're super happy to have her on. Of course, we have our own major ties to Mickey Travels, including our co-host, Alyssa, being a primary uh, co-owner of Mickey Travels. So we're definitely going to have to talk about uh, Mickey Travels and, frankly, both of your guys' connections, how you guys met, and all that. Uh, but let's jump right in. First of all, thank you for coming on the show, Tanya. Um, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm so, I'm excited to be here. Well, I'm happy. I'm happy to hear that. We're excited like to have you. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> That's <laughs> a cool tagline. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, I just wanted to start with like beyond what we, what I just opened with in the introduction, things like that. Uh -huh. Can you introduce yourself a little bit? Talk a little bit more about your story because oftentimes when we have guests on the podcast, it's great to do an introduction and, and sort of, uh, you know, bring people up to speed and what they're like, but I don't like to speak too much about other people. I like them to talk about their journey and who they are and where they came from. Um, so yeah, uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, yourself and our viewers and listeners so they can learn a little bit more about you if they are already familiar. Well, um, let's see. I don't know how far you want me to go back, but just real quickly, I'll tell you, I'm from Kentucky and, um, my daughter, I, well, my daughter and I are huge Disney fans and we would come here on vacation a lot. And then my daughter found out about the Disney college program. And so she applied for that and she got in and then we moved from Kentucky to Florida, which was something we always wanted to do. It's just, that was kind of like the the opening or the the prime time where we could do it you know so we moved to florida and i never in a million years would have thought i would be in any kind of social media youtube anything um but it just kind of all happened by accident i was i was um it it started with me being like really active within the disney college program parents community like I remember like I moved here in 2016 and shortly after I moved here, we had Hurricane Irma. And so everybody had just came down, picked, you know, dropped their kids off, went back home. And then now a hurricane's coming and everybody's in a panic. You know, they just dropped their kids off and 
the news is scary. So I kind of just went on Disney property and went live so they could all see what's happening here. And so they would know that it, it's calm. Everything's fine. Your children are safe. You don't need to worry. And that's, that is like the first time that I, you know, was a part of any kind of social media, I guess you'd say. And then I, my friends and I started an annual pass holder group. So through the parents and through the pass holder group, I kind of started getting a little bit more popular around the Disney community. I'd walk through the parks and I'd be like, Tanya from the parents page or Tanya from the pass holder page. And then I would go live on my personal Facebook page, kind of just for like my family to see me at the parks. Uh, and then just one thing snowballed into another. And then it was kind of like, I kind of got something here, you know, like I'm building like a, this little community. Um, why not do something with it? And so I started a YouTube channel and um, I started it for fun just because I like to talk to people. And I went live Wednesday night and Saturday night, and it was never a job for me. It was just for fun and meeting new people that were coming to town and talking about Disney and sharing my love for Disney. And it kept growing and growing. And then I was like, okay, I have this platform. I might as well use it. And anyway, now it's my full-time job. So... Uh -huh. It's amazing. I love how it started yeah. and how it's grown. Um, yeah. And I love that it's obviously, a, you know, it's Disney focused and there's just so many people out mm -hmm. there and you, you hit the nail on the head who, especially people who don't live here, you know, the three of us are lucky yeah. enough to live, you know, right here in the magic. Um, but I remember when we lived in New Jersey and we would watch a lot of content creators and I would just be just you know, excited to see what they could bring to me, my, you know, thousands of miles away or hundreds of miles away. Um, it made me feel right. like I was there. And I, do you feel that that is part of it with you where you want to not only share the magic, but also bring people that aren't actually here, you know, with you on this journey. So they feel like they're part of, of what you're experiencing? Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, and I talk about that a lot. It's just like, if I never even knew that it existed when I lived in Kentucky, like if I would have known that there were people that walked around, I mean, I don't even know if people did it in 2016. I don't know. But, um, if I would have known like before that there was that outlet where you could be walking through the parks with someone showing you around what's going on. Cause you know, exactly. you miss it so much. Whenever you leave, people never want to leave and Disney depression is real. You just get totally. home and you can't wait to just book that next trip, Yeah, you know, and start that new countdown. So it's great for many reasons. We get to, for the people who are already Disney fans, I get to walk around with them while they, you know, get to experience their favorite things, their favorite snacks, go on their favorite rides, see Mickey, watch a parade. And then there's the other part of it where there's people who maybe they just stumbled across my page or my, you know, my live stream and they've never been to Disney before. So now they get to there. So many people have come up and told me I've never been to Disney. I didn't even think about Disney. I didn't even want to come to Disney until I found your channel. And then we were like, we should go. It looks so fun. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's very rewarding that, you know, I, yeah. I think that's really important. I think, um, Jared, I'll let you speak as well, but I know one of the things, um, you know, sometimes Mickey blog has just gone live. I mean, we don't make it as serious, obviously as big as, as you do, but I remember on a <laughs> February or March day or even January a few years ago, there was a huge storm in New Jersey, lots of snow and cold weather and all that. And it was, 80 degrees and sunny walking down main street. And we went live just to not to make anyone feel jealous or, you know, look at us. You don't have this, but more to say, you know, just come along with us. I know it's not like this where you are right now, but share in this experience. And I can't tell you how many people I remember that day. Like it was yesterday. The comments were like, I needed this. 
Thank you yes. for letting me come to my happy place when it's, you know, snowing an inch, you know, every half hour. Um, it does make a right. difference in people's lives. It I always does. say this when it comes to our business with travel planning. We're not curing cancer. We're not doing brain surgery. But what we do is important. And it does change people's important. lives, whether, you know, in in some way. So I think that that's great. And you obviously are changing people's lives and you're you're impacting them in a very positive way. I, I just love it so much. So that's awesome. I'm just going to yeah. keep on rocking on with it for as long as love I it. can. Love it. Yeah. No, I think, you know, uh, um, you know, bloggers and influencers and people creating content within the Disney community sometimes can get, you know, I don't even know, bad reputations or bad press. But oftentimes what people tend to forget about is that mass amounts of the audiences are really in love with this content. Otherwise, this would not exist. Um, but also how many people are getting joy from it. Um, you know, I used to do a lot of live streams for Mickey Blog, And I can tell you, oftentimes in the comments, I would see a lot of people saying, you know, I was having a bad day. This just brightened my day. And, yeah. You know, I'm in a better mood now or whatever. Like, and I've said this to Alyssa many times, but that's always, you know, some of the highlights in my week, uh, not just through the podcast, but through the social media posts that the Mickey blog team will post is seeing people say like, Oh, I needed this video or this mm -hmm. TikTok made me smile or whatever, you know, because that is, that is that reward, you know, like, yes, what what we do it is technically work but it's it's beyond that otherwise we wouldn't be in this industry in the sense where you do get that reward of feeling like you're impacting lives and and helping people's moods which i think is a really wonderful thing so so tell us a little bit more about the different kind of content you create do you typically focus primarily on live streams um or what do you typically focus on from a content perspective well i I honestly wouldn't even call myself a content creator. I appreciate people saying that, but I mean, I used to post over on Instagram, but I kind of got away from that. I do put stories over there, but I don't make reels or do any of that kind of stuff anymore. Um, only because I'm already, I went full time YouTube and I'm already committing so much time to that. So I try like whenever I'm home, I'm home and I'm present with my family and I kind of just like put my phone down because I'd love to do more, but it's just trying to keep that happy balance between work and, and family for me. Um, so, I mean, all I, I, I just, I'm a live streamer. I put, I have an annual pass holder group. I post on there regularly. Um, I post on Instagram if I'm not on a live stream and we're doing some great, you know, park day, or even if I'm having a beach day or just doing something different, I put things on there so that my viewers can like follow along on whatever adventure we might be on. But for the most part, when it comes to what I do for what I consider my job now, um, is I live stream. Awesome. On YouTube. It's taking people along on the journey, as we said before. And that's what people want, especially. And I think there's people here, obviously, who love to watch what you do. But the, it's, I personally think when someone live streams, I think it's great to reach out. And I said this before to people who aren't here, but people who want to be right. here. And you take them oh. with you on your journey. And I think that that oh, means I've had everything. So many people, I've had people reach out to me and say, uh, they're elderly now. They will never be able to come back to the park again because of their health problems. Or but you're bringing them there. Um, watching, watching your live streams helped me get through chemo treatments, or oh you know, just so many things. People yeah. can't physically come here anymore. And honestly, I'm a talker, so the live streams are great for me because I get to talk with people. Yeah. Rather than just when you're when I'm doing a vlog, I'm just talking to the camera. And I don't have a conversation going, you know, you know, in the live chat, people are saying things, they're answering me, we're talking about everything from, oh my gosh, my kids were on my nerves earlier today to, you know, just real life stuff. And, you know, that is how I connect with my audience is just talking about not just Disney, but, you know, just 
anything that makes me relatable to, to people. So and I think that's unique that's, because I do think a lot of Disney, and I say this with all due respect, but I think there's a lot of content creators or live streamers or everyone or both who mm -hmm. they're just out there. They don't get personal. I, yeah. Some do, but then you see some that are just out there to get the content and right. they're not connecting with people. And I think people want to feel like you said, people want to be heard. They want to, I know right. I've watched live streams where people want just to say, you to say hi to them. Like yes. they just want you to say hi. Oh, I have so many stories about right? that. Too. Like, hi, Tanya. They, they want you to be like, hi, Alyssa. How are I you? Know, or hi, yeah. Jared. Like yeah. they just want that acknowledgement of just being, you know, whereas like you said, with a vlog, you're not talking to anybody. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. And right. there's also live streamers who don't get personal. That's okay. Yeah. But I love that you make it personal. I love the fact that you are making a difference in people's lives. Like you said, somebody who can't get here, or I remember Jared going live multiple times and people saying, I had a really, Jared, you probably remember this. Like I had a really bad week and this just turned it around for me. Like, like Jared's, you know, or just, yeah. I'm having, I, I'm having, a, I'm in a bad place right now. But watching you walk down Main Street or Jared, like, you know, finding the Disney ducks and just kind of stopping yeah. for a minute and just, it makes, it makes a difference in people's lives. So it really does. I think that that's and great. And it's good for me too. Not just for, not just for the viewers, but it's, it's a really great therapy for me as well. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I have a passion for people and, um, I don't, I don't know. It's just, it's good for me, for my soul, even to just like have a conversation with people like that. That's you know? amazing. It's fun. So Tanya, let me ask you this. Um, obviously your daughter was in the college program. Um, would you say yes. your love of Disney, just Disney itself started before she became a college program cast member or did it build from there or where did your love of Disney really originate? So, um, when my daughter was born, my husband was active duty military in the army and we got stationed in Germany. Wow. And so whenever we got stationed in Germany, there was no, no TV there. Everything was in Deutsch, which is uh, the, the language in Germany. We had one TV channel, which was like the military channel. And no, I didn't want to watch that. So I joined the Disney movie club. Remember that? Wow. Like where you could get a movie for a penny or something, as long as you agreed to buy Jared's a couple like, of movies no, sometime. I don't remember year. that. Jared was like literally like Jared's like 10 right now. So he doesn't remember. Yeah. <laughs> so he's joking about do Jared you things. That? So yeah, Jared's like, I don't Jared, remember, do you remember that. that. It's true. Yeah. That was, that was like three or four, maybe. So I joined that? that. Jared, do you remember and... that when you were three or four? Yeah, no, a lot of fond memories, definitely. <laughs> Um, yeah, but so that's no, how you, ahead, that how you got connected with Disney. So yeah, my there was no TV, and I joined the Disney Movie Club. And Mariah, she's my oldest child, and she was my only child at the time. And we fell in love with Disney through the movies. We watched them all the time. That was the only thing we watched when we lived in Germany for four years. There was no other TV. And, you know, we oh. would go to a movie or we'd rent movies that, you know, that's back in the blockbuster days or whatever, um, where you go pick up a movie and go home and watch it. But we had our Disney movie club and we watched all the Disney movies all the time. We fell in love with it. We could not wait to come back to America uh, to go to Disney World. She was five years old. And I went to Disney World and I have been obsessed ever since but our uh, we fell in love through the movies both she and i she's a disney cast member still th to this day and um we cry all the time and we just i don't know we just we love it it's incredible it. like we never get tired of it we just what's to so i'm trying to think of my, what days i'm pretty sure it was sunday night sunday night we went to be our guest for dinner but before our, our reservation, we were standing out by uh, Prince Charming's carousel behind the castle watching the fireworks. And 
that part of Happily Ever After when Tinkerbell starts to fly. There were three little girls behind us and they started screaming Tinkerbell and they were so excited. And Mariah and I just looked at each other and started to sob. It was so sweet. You know, we're just, we're suckers. We have drank all the Disney Kool-Aid and we are so bad. We just love it so much. We really oh, do. That's, you know, that, or, that organic love is very much translated by what you do. Um, I, yeah. I don't think you can, you can fake that. No, it's, it's, it's so real. We just love it so much. Like my husband and my boys, they would come here with me on vacation every year, but they never really like got it. You know what I'm saying? So they don't really go to the parks. They don't really care about it. They're more sports and other things, sure. but Mariah and I, we just love it so much and we will it. forever go. Like I still, after, you know, being here for what, six years now, I get, I still get so excited going under that arch. I'm like, get you. you know, I'm, I'm still wanting to take a picture going through the arch because yeah. we're on Disney property. <laughs> it's crazy. Wonderful. No, but I that, and, and that's how I got my name, Jared, that crazy Disney lady. My <laughs> sister used to call me that all the time. She's like, you're going again. Why are you going back? You know, and I'm sure everybody else who's a Disney fan get asked that same question. Y'all are going again. And we'd be like, yes, we are. We are going back to Disney. That's what we love to do. So that's where we're going. And so I would come here and I would always go home with a bag of Disney gifts for my nieces and nephews. And my sister would be like, oh, Lord, here comes that crazy Disney lady. Oh, that's so cute. My channel name. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. No, that's great. Especially, especially that it has more personal ties to you with, mm -hmm. you know, uh, something like that. I think that's awesome. So in regards to your growth over the years and everything like that, has there been any sort of specific contributor or key to that, you know, growth? Because, you know, I know what's, what's worked for Mickey blog. I know Alyssa knows what's worked for Mickey travels. Um, and I know across the board, in almost anything that's successful, Alyssa talks about this often with the agents, but um, uh, being consistent and consistency is so important to growing with anything you do. That's but right. of course, beyond that, um, you know, what do you think has been the biggest key to, you know, your channel and your pages grow? You know, I really think that live streaming is kind of like the future. It's like especially since COVID happened, I really have noticed growth in my channel because people felt a little trapped and live streaming was kind of like a window to the world. And that's when I noticed like a substantial growth in my channel um, is just uh, people being able to, no matter where they are, just like, I feel like people now kind of go on looking for who's live or what's what's going on in the world that's live out there that we can watch. It's kind of like a window to the world when you can't escape somewhere. So that, and of course, consistency, you know, um, I, I do feel like I probably need to add in some different times of day or maybe a little time on the weekend. Cause right now I'm very strict with my you know, my schedule Monday through Friday, only while my kids are in school so that I'm home at night for homework and dinner and all of that. So I think that I could probably grow my channel a little more if maybe I stepped out on an evening stream and kind of pick up uh, viewers that have been at work all day or been at school all day, or maybe a weekend for people who are just so I'd like to try to maybe bring that in somewhere at some point to where I could pull in some evening audience or a weekend audience. But for me, consistency and people are creatures of habit and they know every Monday, 1030, or I could be running late because, you know, somebody had to poop or something. You never know when you're trying to get out the door, <laughs> something's happening. <laughs> So I, I try to get there right at 1030. Sometimes it's 11. But um, yeah, I just, you know, my viewers know my schedule and they're always there. And we they call themselves the crazy crew. 
And we just, ha we just have a wonderful time. I've met so many of them in person. We had one meetup so far. We plan to do more meetups in the future. And people have come from all over the country just to come in and like, wow. you know, meet face to face that they've been talking to for years in a live chat. I do love the idea with, I do love the idea with live streams that you can sort of interact interact directly with people mm -hmm. um, because that's oftentimes the tough part about whether it is Instagram or TikTok or, um, you know, even vlog style videos with YouTube. Uh, you're not interacting with people in the actual moment. Like sometimes you'll get a comment after the fact and you can respond to that comment, but maybe it's a few hours afterwards and they don't want to respond anymore. It's like, you know, you can get real raw reactions from people oh, yeah. of like oh my gosh I'm this is this is exactly what I want to see and I do think it's also fun for you the creator to play with the idea of being able to hey where would you like me to go next you know like that that's mm -hmm. the beauty of being an annual pass holder and being here all the time right. I remember thinking to myself like oh, okay I kind of feel like going over here on this live stream and I was like you know what this person uh, is asking me to go over to Echo Lake and I live here. Like, wh who am I to say no to that person who right, doesn't get right. to see Echo Lake as much as I do? So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I think that's a really great concept. So, Tanya, we're going to have uh, several more questions for you. But before we do that, I do want to take our mid episode break because I want to stop for a second and mention that this episode of the Mickey Bod podcast is sponsored and brought to you by Mickey Travels. Mickey Travels is a nationally rec recognized leader in Disney vacation planning. They are diamond earmarked by Disney and their services are always 100% free. So reach out to Mickey Travels today for a free quote on your Disney vacation at MickeyTravels.com. That's MickeyTravels.com making magic one vacation at a time. And the reason I especially want to mention Mickey Travels is Tanya has direct ties to Mickey Travels as a partner. So I wanted to sort of ask you about that. Obviously, um, you have uh, become an, an official partner and everything like that. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, can you talk about how that came about, how you met Alyssa right over here, also with us on the screen, um, yeah. and, uh, and her husband, <laughs> <laughs> and her husband, Greg, and uh, how, how that partnership sort of uh, started? So, well... She mentioned earlier that they lived in New Jersey. And I was live streaming when I met their youngest son, Nick. <laughs> and Nick um, would be in the chat a lot. And he started his own YouTube channel even before he ever came here to Florida. So I knew Nick first through yeah, the totally. live stream. And then... Um, you know, Nick would be in the chat and Nick would come down on vacation. And then, you know, you all would go back to New Jersey. And I just remember him one, one day coming in the chat and saying that y'all were moving here. So I, I don't remember how all that went, but you all moved here. And then Nick was here all the time and just doing fantastic, growing his YouTube channel. And, but anyway. Nick is outstanding. I've always just loved him. He is the sweetest young man. I used to tell him all the time before he was ever a Disney cast member. I used to tell him, I was like, you are an old soul. You are wise beyond your years. He was always so much more mature than even me. And, you know, he just represented himself so well. And then it was, it, I think it was like a few years later when I actually found out that, you know, he, you know, that you all were MickeyTravels.com. I always heard about MickeyTravels.com, but, and then one day it just clicked. I was like, oh my gosh, MickeyTravels.com is your family? And that, you know, that's how the whole thing, that's how it all, all started, how I knew about MickeyTravels.com and how, um, I'd been watching Mickey blog and anyway, it all came together in full circle. And uh, then remember I told you all that at first I just thought took my, my channel was just for fun. And then I decided, you know, 
I'm going to do this full time. And so I just started thinking about, you know, maybe it's time for sponsors. You know, let me help people that are coming here and what their needs may be. So I started, you know, making a list of things of how I could help people. And, you know, a travel agent is something that they definitely need. And I have had so many travel agencies reach out to me in the past and want to sponsor my channel. And I was like, you know, I was not in that mindset, you know? And so anyway, when I made the decision to do it, the first person I thought of was mickeytravels.com because I've never, I don't know anybody else. And you all have such a great reputation. And, you know, you hear nothing but good things about MickeyTravels.com. I know, Nick, I know you all. So it was a, it was just a no brainer for me to reach out. Well, we, and here obviously, we are. you know, I, I can say honestly that when it comes to our partnerships like you, we don't take those lightly. You know, we're not just right. like, oh, we'll have anybody, you know, come on in. Um, you know, we're as particular as you would be or any of our partnerships would be. Um, it was an easy decision for us to want to work with you, but I, I do kind of get a chuckle out of, you know, there's no question about it. You know, our tie is certainly through Nick. Um, you know, yeah. he is the reason that, you know, you knew him probably a good, a good amount of time before I ever knew who, you know, we ever met each other. Um, which is kind of fun. Actually, I feel like Nick has introduced us to many people down here that we otherwise did not know. Mm -hmm. Um, right. but it's funny when. Um, when you came, when, when we sort of connected with the possibility of becoming partners, um, I mentioned something to Nick about it. And let me tell you one thing about Nick is he's very honest. Like he's going to tell you like mm -hmm. it is like, if he doesn't think something's right, he'll be the first one to be like, yeah, no, mm -mm, no, I think you want to start. <laughs> and I was curious, you know, not that he was going to make our decision, yeah. of course. And he said, right. you couldn't pick a better partner. Um, you know, he just adores you, um, you know, for sure. Um, he was so excited about our partnership with you. Um, so it's kind of like you said, it's full circle. He's the one that right. introduced us and now we're partners yep. and, and all that great stuff. Um, but we appreciate it because um, like you said, you know, it is a service, a free service that right. you can then share with your viewers and your listeners right. and your followers that, you know, and the best part is it doesn't cost them any more money. So it's not one of these things where you're saying, well, work with Mickey Travels, but it is going to cost you a little more. People start to get a little right. leery yeah. of that. Like, well, hold on, I could do it myself and it wouldn't cost anything. It's sort of an easy sell when you know you have experts right. that are going to help you along the way for, you know, no charge. Um, and of course, you know, we're extremely proud to be, you know, one of the very few diamond agencies in the industry um so thank you for right. you know obviously acknowledging that because that's something that i think does make mickey travel stand out um but another reason Absolutely. that we're very particular about who we would ever ask to start a partnership with um it's been nothing short of a wonderful beautiful partnership that we have um we do get right. a lot of people who will reach out and say if tanya is telling me to come to you i'm coming to you and i love that and Absolutely. we have that with other yes that. that's really important to us because you know when you're in the position you're in tanya and you tell people if you want to come to disney reach out to our friends at mickey travels it means something coming from you you know they right. they believe in you and they trust they trust you you know that that's the big yeah. thing that you you have a trust with your listeners and your followers and, mm -hmm. um, and that means a lot to us because then they know that your name is behind us, right? You're not going right. to just tell someone go here and you're like, I hope that works out. I don't really know them very well, but give it a try. I would never you know? do that. Couldn't I do would it, absolutely right? Absolutely never do that. Exactly. No, and I will say, no you know, way. all of our partnerships that we have are very similar to you. They're very particular. Mm -hmm. Um, they, mm -hmm. their name, their reputation, their name is behind our agency. Um, and by the way, vice absolutely. versa. You know, like if you were some right, exactly. really crazy person <laughs> who was crazy, <laughs> crazy, I don't mean crazy Disneyland, I mean crazy person. I might be like, oh yeah. my gosh, he's a partner of ours. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry about that. You know, if he did. <laughs> so it's really easy and it's, it's such a beautiful partnership. And um, in the amount of time that we've been partners, um, we are so grateful to have that really beautiful partnership where 
Um, we help each other out, but it's all through the love of yes. Disney. So thank you for that. Absolutely. I'm very honored. Very so honored are we. to be a part of it. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's yeah, Do you feel the love? Are you uh, feeling this love? I yeah, I just no. wish I wish Alyssa would say this many nice things about me every once in a while, just once in a blue moon. Every once in a while, it, no, your, your, your day is coming, Darren. <laughs> now true. you know some people that watch my channel have never even been to Disney, and if you've oh, never well. been, especially a Disney cruise, my goodness, oh, if you've yeah. never been on a Disney cruise, you need to have somebody to guide you. Absolutely, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. You don't want to do that on your own nope. because nope. there's a lot involved in that. You know, you need to know For all sure. the steps and how to do it, and where to go and what to do. It's just so much better to have somebody to help guide you. Absolutely. Through. No, I mean, I think that's oftentimes what we talk about when we bring up Mickey Travels. Like, I know it's easy for the listener or the viewer to say like, oh, okay, this, this. They they have to say that. Like, no, I get that. But mm -hmm. you got to understand something is like that especially if you've never been like especially um it is so important to to use a service like this and you know a service of this quality to this type of you know level where they are diamond earmarked is even better but because you want the best of the best but regardless um being able to have someone who you know is an expert with all this and knows what they're talking about and knows how to help you guide you through your days because you know not just Disney cruises, Tanya, I, I think you can agree with me on the sense that Disney uh, hasn't exactly gotten um, less complicated over the years. Uh, oh and God. I think most Absolutely. people know that it's gotten mm -hmm. more complicated over the years. And, and that's not to say it's not fun anymore. It's just it is all that much more important to use a, you know, a travel planner like like someone at Mickey Travels who can help you mm -hmm. book it all, plan it all, walk you through it, um, explain to you that uh, when you're going on the monorail through the contemporary, that's not Disney Springs. Believe it or not, I've heard that before. Um, you know, like there's, it's, it's always funny. Do they think uh, that's Disney to, Springs? Is that what they think? They're, hey, they're the that's Disney what, it's a real quote. I was, I was on the monorail when I heard someone going through uh we were going through the contemporary and this dad goes, honey, look, that's Disney Springs. And um, my first thought was just like, you know, like I want to I want to judge a person like that. But, you don't you just think of how many people go to Disney World for the first time every single day. They've never been in their life and everything is brand new. I know when I walk when I walk into a new city. I'll see a chicken place and I'll be like, wow, that place looks amazing. And yet it could be the worst chicken place on the planet, you know, but without that expert, without that planner to help you along, it just makes a world of a difference. Um, yeah. So the next thing I wanted to sort of ask you about, because a lot of people who are going to tune into this kind of episode and, and want to click on this episode beyond people who of course, follow you and are big fans of you. Um, might be people who are trying to uh, learn how to get into the uh, Disney, you know, live streaming, you know, universe or content creation world and things like that. And I know you said you're not exactly a content creator, but um, regardless, a lot of people who want to jump into that, which uh, is a lot of people these days. A lot of people want right. to be a Disney YouTuber or vlogger or live streamer. Um, what kind of advice could you give to someone who's just starting out who wants to do it? Um, you know, because I do think a lot of people get a little discouraged at the fact that it is a little saturated, oversaturated now in terms of how many mm -hmm. people are doing it. Um, but if everybody thought that way, then there'd be nobody doing it. You know, you got to. You got it. You can't let that kind of stuff bother you. Um, there was travel agencies long before Alyssa and Greg decided to start Mickey Travels, and that didn't stop them from starting it. You can't let that kind of mindset stop you. So having said that, if you have somebody who is wanting to become a Disney live streamer, zero subscribers today, what kind of advice would you give them? I, I get asked this question a lot. You know, how do you start YouTube or how do you start on social media? I always say that first you need to find something you're passionate about. 
something that will come easy for you to share with people and you will find joy in talking about it or sharing it with them. Um, so that would be the first step. And then, I don't know, I guess you just have to like, make the move i don't know like for me it was just like a youtube channel i don't know about that because you know i've never i'm not a technical person i don't even know how to start like how do you even sign up like there was just so many things i had no idea what a gimbal was or so basically um number one find out what you're passionate about uh number two uh you know, you just, I'm going to just start with YouTube. I'm going to talk about YouTube because there's so many different platforms. So for YouTube, um, let's say that you want to start a YouTube channel, like my kids would love to do all that, you know, find something you're passionate about. That's number one. And then come up with a name for your channel and then decide when you're going to start, you know, let's start doing something on Monday. Okay, so Monday, get together what you're going to put out what, and decide if you're going to live stream or vlog, you know, get get a plan together. If you're going to go uh, live on YouTube, you need to like let people know that you're going live on YouTube. Maybe it's just friends and family at first. And then they start to watch and then they tell somebody. And also collaboration is great for growth you know, get with someone else and you all can build on things together. That always helps. So like, let's just say, Jared, you want to start a YouTube channel tomorrow and start live streaming? Well, you can reach out to me and, you know, we're friends now. And I could say, sure, I'll shout out your channel. I'll send people your way. You know, so collaboration with other people that are doing kind of like the same thing as you uh, to help build your audience and get your name out there. Um, Whenever, you know, as far as YouTube goes, I do like post it on my Instagram or post it on my Facebook and let people know that I'm going live or, um, so with YouTube, you have to have 1000 subscribers and you have to have 4,000 hours of watch time to become a partner with YouTube and become monetized and start making money. So your goal would be to start getting the thousand followers and um, get that watch time out there and keep rocking on. I don't know. I mean, tell if you, you all have that other specific I think that's great advice, Tanya. And one of the things, um, and, you know, it's interesting because you mentioned about Nick starting a YouTube channel. Um, mm -hmm. He sort of put that aside because he's pretty busy being a Disney cast member these days. But I remember, mm -hmm. and this goes along with what you're just saying, um, when Nick started, he was in our basement in New Jersey with a green screen behind him, a very high yeah. pitched voice. He was 13 mm -hmm. years old. Um, yep. And we would be at the top of the stairs listening. He'd be like, hello, everybody, you know, and he'd have two people watching. Yeah. And I think it was my husband and, and myself. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No joke. And remember, I remember one day he went on and he had five people watching. Well, he thought it was great, right? Yep. He was 13 years old. Fine. And what's really funny is I remember, you know, when he, we moved to Florida and he would go live in the parks and he would have, you know, maybe 10 people watching. And I remember the one yep. day he went and he had a hundred people watching and he came home and he was yes. like, I had a hundred people. That's a lot of people watching. Like, that's a I lot of people. I remember when a hundred people came in my chat. I was like, you've yeah. got to be kidding me. Yeah. But you want to hear yeah. something funny? And this is just, I'm not a, I'm not a t content creator. I'm not a YouTuber. I'm not a live streamer. I'm none of it. I'm the worst person when it comes to technology. But I remember something Greg told Nicholas, and this is the best piece of advice, I think, for anybody getting into this business. He said, don't, don't look at how many people are watching put out good content. Yeah. And when you put out good yeah. content, people will come and watch it. And I remember, and you know, yes, he was young and he's like, oh, no, it matters. I want to see how many people he's like, it doesn't matter if you have four people or 400 people or 4,000 people. He said, put the good content out. And he goes, people That's will come, so you know, if you build it, they will come. Yes. And he grew yeah. his channel to a pretty 
whatever it was, oh, but he fantastic. grew it and he just, like, of people like watching. you say, don't, and it's funny because there were times where Nick would go live with other big YouTubers, other yeah. live streamers, and they would mostly be over to the other channels and not watch. And he would text us on the side going, I don't have a lot of people. So-and-so has so many more. Greg's like, who cares? Who cares? Yeah. You have right now 400 people that. that are watching you and they want yeah. to see good stuff. So he said, don't yeah. worry. And, and the more he didn't worry about it, the more his channel grew. And That's I would so say, true. by the way, the same thing about my business. You know, there's, a, there's over 30,000 agencies out there that do what we do. And we're mm -hmm. one of the very, I'm sorry, I know this is going to sound, I, I mean this with love to my agency. We're one of the top agencies in the country. And it's not because we have special, we're not given special things from Disney that no one else does. But like you said, we found what we love and we do our mm -hmm. best with it. And when That's you right. do that, you create something wonderful. So anybody that is considering getting into Disney content creation or live streaming, yes, there's competition out there. There's competition with everything, right? Jared, our yeah. blog has lots of competition, but what do we do? Yes. We have our reporters out there getting great content every day, great writers. Mm -hmm. So just get out there, like you said, find what you love and do it great. And the rest all yes, falls into place. Have to do. Sorry for getting on a soapbox, but I, no, I just that's had to okay. say And you know, in regards remember. to the uh, people feeling like it's oversaturated, you know, there are a lot of people that are out there doing it, but everybody, I feel like everyone brings something different and there's going to be people that relate to you, yeah. but they don't relate to somebody else, you know or what I'm saying? Versa. And it's going to be that way, no matter, you know, right. whoever it is, you know, I feel like I kind of like relate more to, um, moms and dads and, you know, you know, I'm relatable to that kind of thing and, and bringing our kids to the park to where someone young would be, you know, uh, more relatable to people within their age group and their sure. experiences and the thing, you know, so you always have something different to bring to the table and Absolutely. people are going to relate to you on, on, on that level, whatever it is, there's someone for everyone Absolutely. out there. And Jared, I would no, say I that mean, about our blog, would you not? Like, yeah. we have a relatable audience to Mickey blog that there's other blogs out there, right, Jared? But yeah. maybe we bring something different that, you know, um, we one thing about Mickey blog is we always try to put a positive spin on it, on things. And there's people who right. like that. They don't want to hear the negative all the time. So um, I, I, I think that's relatable, certainly to our industry, in, into what oh, we do as well. Oh, my gosh, well. yes. Absolutely. Well, I think I think what's important too, especially being you guys both mentioned it, is um, you know Theodore Roosevelt said, "Comparison is the thief of joy," and I think that's you know a quote I think about often in the sense where if you are you know if you are making content and you're constantly comparing yourself to this other channel who has way more views than you. Or if you're a travel agency and you're comparing yourself to this agency who has more clients than you, or it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're running a, you know, a business, a car wash business, there's going to be a car wash out there that is washing more cars than you. You can't spend your time comparing yourself and what you're doing to other people. Focus on yourself and what you're yes. doing and quality definitely always wins yeah That's just do your best make quality content and people will come quality. but i also really love the advice you gave tanya about you know uh find something you love because that is definitely the be the biggest piece of advice i always give people when people ask how uh how to get involved in an industry like this for example is okay well you gotta love it you can't you can't do what we do if you don't love it um right. and you and th it doesn't have to be disney that you love it could be anything if you right. really love cars go into cars but love it you know like yeah. it it's going to make the job part of it it's going to make the the grind part of it all that much easier when you're waking up and you you enjoy what you're doing yeah. you know so it could be makeup it could be clothes it could be food it could be whatever just like find something that you're passionate about and bring and do it, it well and do the best yeah, you know, and not for nothing, right. at the end of the day, Jared, we talk about this all the time. We are 
all three of us, and we're in the same industry, but different parts of it, if you will, different components. Right. We're all so lucky mm -hmm. to do what we do yes. for a living. I mean, if you really, I mean, I, Jared, I we've seen that for years. Like, you know, yes, are is it crazy? And um, you know, we joke about a specific festival day where Jared was working the festival and it was 130 and it was one of the craziest hot seats. But you know what? I bet he wouldn't trade that for something else because it's something you look back and say, oh man, that was a crazy day, but he's an Epcot at a festival. Right. So we're so yeah. lucky that Tommy, so you get to you get to share your love of Disney and all things with people who watch you. And Jared gets to you know, share, you know, the content that he, that he finds and he's out in the parks and, and creating social content that people are going to really, it's going to really impact them. And, and our agency gets to help people find their way to Disney. I'd say we're pretty privileged and blessed to do the jobs that we do. That's fair. That is. I always say highly favored, definitely highly favored. I don't like, I, it happened by accident. I never, I never planned on doing this before. Nothing's an accident. And I, I mean, there was, there was a plan for you. Yeah. You just didn't know it. Right. Um, and that's just like with you, we talked and you told me your story, how all this happened. And it was just like, you know, exactly. and here you are. It's so incredible. Tell us, we are very plans. blessed. Do you, do you have any, you know, do you have any, um, not that you have to share, but any big plans or I know you mentioned obviously about possibly, you know, maybe bring a nighttime stream or a weekend, but anything that's in the works that you're kind of thinking about, or are you, are you just loving what you're doing and just going to keep doing it? Well, I'm one of those people, I guess this is where you could call me the content creator because my <laughs> wheels are forever turning. Like I'm always trying to think of something, you know? Um, so we'll see what happens. You know, I always, uh, am looking for, you know, looking forward like moving okay. forward isn't that what, and Walt what are we going to do next and i think walt was always looking forward wasn't he <laughs> yeah i mean you know thinking about what's going to come and like what can we do and you know yeah. i would love to be able to take trips and visit um viewers that can't be here who would like to meet me that thought and you know something like that would be great for the future like visiting people's hometowns and have a meetup because you know wow. we have like a awesome. hundred people in wisconsin or a hundred people in chicago or a hundred people in mm -hmm. buffalo and everybody kind of meet up there that might be something in the future definitely uh we'll need mickey travels in the future whenever we start to take like some group cruises you know, we got a new one coming. Love it. <laughs> just love, I know. It's so exciting. Jared, I, just saying, I love how Disney throws that. Like, we, we were not. I, I, was like, I, I, mean, learned it about, I learned it from Jared today. And I don't know, like, Jared, what was your initial reaction when you saw this news drop this morning? Well, usually um, to take to take people behind the scenes of the job. Uh, for a second, um, I was running uh, Mickey Blog social media pages uh, during the news drop um, of the Disney Destiny cruise ship coming. And um, usually for big news like that, when it first drops, um, you know, you're you're obviously you want to get the content out fast. You want right. to let everybody know about it, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, all, all the different social media platforms. Um, and then the blog is trying to write the post very quickly. Um, but. I was fortunate where I was like right place, right time, the exact moment the news dropped. But I looked right. at it and I was like, I did like a double take because it was right. such a big, big piece of information that just like dropped. And I was like, uh, uh, okay, um, okay, let's go. Let's, let's put this out. Yeah. I was just typing like I couldn't even breathe. Uh, but, but, but the point is, is that, you know, these are, it, it is, it's exciting. And, and, you know, that's, that's a part of the job that you, uh, that you take on. And, and sometimes it's a challenge, but it is, it is interesting how Disney will do that to you. It doesn't really matter. Even if you're in the media, sometimes you don't know, or if you're a, a big travel agency, you don't know, like sometimes Disney will just surprise all of us and just randomly really at 1047 on yeah. a Wednesday, be like, Hey, look, new cruise ship. Have a good day. <laughs> 
<laughs> Have a magical day, everyone. Well, we always joked when we, you know, obviously, Tanya, you know, festival days, first day of the festival is big. I mean, there's a lot to yeah. cover, yeah. merchandise, food, yes. all the things. Mm-hmm. And uh, the first day of, um, of Flower and Garden, you know, we were all joking the night before saying, you know, maybe Tiana's is, you know, Bayou Adventure is going to soft open tomorrow, <laughs> the first day of the festival. Because yeah. we were joking, but everything, they love to, they love to just kind of throw these, yeah, it's it's so funny, like Jared, like you said, new cruise ship, bye, <laughs> and you're just like, okay. I mean, literally, when I saw it come through from Jared, I did a double take, because I was like, whoa, wait, new ship, new name. Ni- I, like we had no I was like, knowledge. Is this for real? Yeah, I literally yeah. was like, Jared, are you April first is coming up, but it's not yet. Yeah, I mean this one with their and and Jared's I like, always, I always, I got always like <laughs> when people tell me, I'm like, first of all, where did you see that? Because I don't believe everything. And then it yeah. was like Disney parks. <laughs> oh man, well that's the one good thing. That's the yeah. beauty we had behind Mickey Blog is we always rely on these our team is so great and they make sure we're going to make sure we have, we're getting it from a good source before, you know, one thing about Mickey blog is we do not. And Jared, please correct me if I'm wrong. We don't put rumors out. We just don't. No, I always, yeah. I tell everybody. We are not a rumor to blog. Yep. Nope. Because rumors have been known to be false and there's nothing yes. worse than walking back a rumor. Once or twice. Yeah, once or twice. And the problem is when you walk it back, people then question future things that you tell them. Yeah. Because then yeah, they're like, well, true. you told us this and that didn't and come to fruition. True. Right. That wasn't true. Yeah. So I will say our Mickey blog team is so, you know, they're so on their A game with if something comes out, there's, I mean, you should see the the text group blows up. It's like, where do you find it? We got to find it. Da-da-da-da. I mean, and Jared's just like, Okay, <laughs> hold on. They just dropped something. Yeah. Really it's it's pretty funny. We have a lot of fun yeah. doing it. Um, but you know, um, yeah, it, it's just great. I think the three of us are very much on the same page of what we do, why we do it, and how we do it. Yeah, for sure. That's right. Well, for Tanya, sure. it's been a real pleasure to have you on today. We're really grateful for you. Uh, you know, sort of talking about your journey, but also explaining, you know giving that advice to people who might want to start up. Um, you, you said a lot of really great things. And again, the, the big thing that stuck with me is about, you know, really loving what you do and, and finding something that you love before you jump into it. Um, mm-hmm. Because, because if you don't love something and you try to go start it up as a passion project or a side project, like spoiler alert, you're probably going to give up on it eventually. And I'm not saying that happens every single time, but it happens often because you just didn't, you don't love it as much as you thought you did. Because I think another great piece of advice that someone um, in this industry actually gave me one time was um, they told me that uh, to not ever really think about the money and, or the views or any of that, any of the numbers, only ever think about, uh, you know, how much you love it and whether you love it and do you still love it and everything else will come with it. And people care about things that people are passionate about, you know, and it's very clear that uh, you're very passionate about what you do. And, and it was great hearing about your story um, and, and back to, back to the Disney movies and everything like that. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very unique start to a journey, uh, Disney um, journey specifically being over in Germany and, and watching movies like that with your daughter and, and tell I'm down for you know. some Disney tri- movie trivia anytime I got you <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take That's the gold. Awesome. I'm gonna take the prize on that one I love yeah, it well, well Tanya uh before we leave where can our followers and um you know viewers support you more and uh see more of your stuff come join a live stream Come on over Monday through Friday, that crazy Disney lady on YouTube. I usually get started about 1030 until 430. My youngest son gets out at four and come join the chat and hang out and meet some new friends. Hey, we've had people get married who met in my chat. We've had people uh, become great friends and now they Disney together. You know, uh, people who 
we just had crazy crew here that um, they can, both came with their families and now their families are friends and come to Disney together. It's just great. It's just so much fun. The best part that's is awesome. you, you're the catalyst of all that. And that's really, really special. Um, and I just want to say again, before we end this stream, um, not only thank you for coming on to Mickey, our Mickey blog podcast, but thank you for your partnership with Mickey travels. Like I said, we you. Um, like you, uh, we only want to work with the best and we feel that way with you. So thank you so much for, um, you know, um, just having that partnership, sharing the love of Disney. Um, and we're excited for fu the future and a very long partnership with you. Sounds good. I'm excited. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's been a pleasure to have you here. And uh, we hope all of our listeners and viewers enjoyed this episode. If you are new to the Mickey Blog Podcast, welcome, of course. Uh, do check out the rest of our episodes. We have quite a few out there now. As Alyssa said, this is episode 74. So we've been doing this for a while. We have new episodes that drop every single Friday. If you want to watch our episodes and see Alyssa roll her eyes at me in real time, you can do that. Just head over to our YouTube channel and you can watch all of our episodes over there. We have a whole playlist for the podcast. Um, if you want to listen to our episodes, you can do so on any platform. Of course, we are most popular on platforms like Apple and Spotify, but we're available on lots of other platforms as well. And if you want to learn more about Mickey blog and be up to date on all things Disney, of course, head to mickeyblog.com where you can catch the latest and greatest in all things Disney. We cover Disney 24 seven, 365, literally. I swear I'm not lying about those numbers. Um, and uh, you can also follow us on social media where we are on Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun jazz. So definitely go check us out. We appreciate your support. We can't wait to see you guys next week on another edition of the Mickey Blog Podcast. Have a magical rest of your day.